Hey guys, this is Darren with Creativity Unleashed, and in this video, we're going to show you guys how to build a biodigester. So in this video, we will show you guys how to do all the plumbing and get the tank finished up, get the lid finished up. You can see right here, just showing you guys how much gas it actually puts out. It's flammable now and burning really well. I've been able to cook food and stuff. Like you can see, got an egg up here um, cooking nicely. So let's get into it. So you can see right here, I'm slipping in the stainless steel bolts into the holes that I drilled before using the lid as a template. Um, they get welded from the back side so that um, it can't leak gas through the bolts. And um, we tighten the nuts on it just to keep them straight. Uh, you don't want to over tighten them because when you're welding, if the bolt happens to get really hot with your welding on it, if it gets too hot, it can cause the threads to distort and you can't get the nut off and it can cause the bolt to break and then you're gonna have a little issues there. The type of silicone I'm using to seal it is actually like a urethane silicone used for like automotive applications and they use it for like sealing in windshields and around lights and stuff and it works very well when you cry, um, put that on a good thick layer before you tighten down the bolts it um, seals up any air gaps or anything like that so works out quite quite lovely indeed. So I've got the stainless steel bolts welded in and I need to cut plasma cut out holes to weld in these threaded couplings, I guess, into the top. I got two of the two inch for the gas out and for the fertilizer out. And then this will be the feeding one, which I'm going to connect PVC fittings to these. I just didn't want them to leak. And so I prefer to, um, to have something solid welded into the tank. So I thought I'd tell you what I've been doing today is we went inside the tank with a, like a three pound sledgehammer and beat the living daylights out. You can probably see a little bit dense. Um, they're not going to really matter. Aesthetically they might not look as pretty as you might like, but it caused the tank to be slightly domed, but we didn't hit it near the center to keep our seal good with the lid. So then um, we bolted the lid on it. Um, checked all that and it looks like it's going to make an incredibly good seal and then right here we also I also cut plasma cut circle into it and I welded in a coupling and then this is where the gas um, outlet's going to be um, with a longer piece of pipe and then some reducers and a valve to let it out and now then it needs the feeder pipe so um, so doing the same principle seeing so putting it up here and then having the the fertilizer out right down here. So in a few years, once the tank um, gets too much buildup of um, like biomass um, fertilizer, um, it'll need to be emptied somehow. And to get a lot of water out and stuff to be able to actually empty it, it would be a really big pain in the butt to take off the lid and try to be in and out, like scooping out bucket loads. So I think uh, best option is just this. I got a four inch coupling with an end cap, so I'll just plasma cut a hole in it and then weld that into place. And I'm assuming that should work pretty well, but I guess we'll find out in several years from now, unless I somehow kill off the bacteria and have to empty it sooner.
So the next part left to do is the painting. So here is the two-part epoxy that I got. This is a red oxide two-part epoxy, which is good for our boats and things that are under water lines and for um, being in tanks and all that. So it should hold up really well to the biodigester. Um, I'm using a flap disc and an angle grinder to knock off all the rust and everything so that it um, should adhere properly. So here is the, the tank now ready for painting. So get on with the painting. So I now got the tank here painted with a red oxide, a two-part epoxy. It's supposed to be really good for tanks and industrial applications. So yeah, seems pretty good to me. So I basically just lack putting in the PVC pipes and all the fittings and gas fittings and all that. So we'll get on with that. So starting to get things plumbed inside the tank. Here is the feeding tube where we'll drop everything into the tank. It has like a 60 degree angle opening under the bottom. You can see that good. And here's what it looks like on the top. Into the coupling we have threaded the, the connection that's right on one side and where the pipe connects. In. So over here we have the, the fertilizer out which we've used a hole saw and drilled holes straight through it so it's in the middle of the tank so that all the water that um, isn't being digested, all the food on the bottom or the top, every time you add new stuff in through the feeding pipe, will be able to come through here, up and out and drop out. So guys, we're going to be painting this thing black with an industrial um, black paint to help it to heat up the tank so that it'll cause the, the digestion of the stomach to work better because it works better at like 90, 100 degrees. And we also want to protect the PVC from ultraviolet rays so that they um, should last longer. So let's get on to painting, boys. What we did is we threaded in uh, connection there and then I put a two foot piece of two inch with another connection that's threaded and the reason that these are all threaded is so I can be able to attach it, change out fittings, do whatever I need um, but the main thing is if it ever got a clog I could thread this off here or here and stick a stick through it and clean it out but I doubt that will happen but it is possible and then up here we have a valve for turning the gas on and off to the tank and here's another piece of pipe in there we heated this up and I also heated up this brass fitting that will connect to like a propane hose or in your clear plastic hoses and then we threaded it in while it was really hot so it made the threads so that's pretty easy a little trick for you there Milwaukee heat gun saves the day so the biodigester is basically finished up now and in part three we're gonna show you guys how to get the thing started get everything going um, here we have, we're leveling out the ground where we're going to put the tank. I'd recommend to possibly insulate so that there isn't heat loss to the ground. Um, so remember to check out part three and we'll talk about some of the improvements and things that could even be made to this design. So I guess I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in part three.